Today we are going to see how a terrain scanner works in Unity. In games like Dead Stranding or No Man's Sky, you can see a similar effect where we press a button and it creates a wave that scans our surroundings. Sometimes it highlights certain objects and even paths. It's quite useful. And normally we would require a shader that reads the scene death and... But what if there is another approach? We still need a shader but a simpler one. I realized there is an easier and faster method that I want to share with you today. So, without further ado, let's jump right into this. Just wanna say these videos are possible thanks to my patrons, and if you consider supporting me, you will get access to this project and many, many other assets that you can use in your games. So, here's what I have in my URP project a simple scene with a plane and some mountains, and a camera with a script to fly around. The trick comes from these prefabs. I realized that if we spawn a sphere that keeps on growing for a certain amount of time and within a certain size, we could get the terrain scanner effect. But how? Well, it all comes down to the intersection shader, which I recently made an in-depth video about it, I left a link below. But I'm still going to show you the whole process, so let's create an empty game object, rename it to VFX underscore terrain scanner, reset the transform and inside it create a particle system. We can call it Sphere. This also works with VFX Graph, of course, by the way. This one is not going to loop. And it's not going to move. Start speed at 0. We can already say the start size is 100. And that the emission is 0 for the rate over time, but we want a burst of one particle. And we don't need the shape model. Let's turn it off. This is what we have. It's a billboard. And in our case we need a sphere, so on the renderer, the render mode can be set to mesh. And instead of a cube, we can use the default sphere that comes with Unity. If I zoom out, here we go, we can see the huge sphere. That's alright, because now we are going to need to use the size of our lifetime. This is what's going to scale up our terrain scanner. It can have this curve from 0 to 1 or this one, which is a little bit curvy, and it slows down towards the end. If I press play, this is what we have. A growing sphere. Now it all comes down to the shader. Let's first create a prefab out of this VFX underscore terrain scanner object. And then with right click, create a shader graph, an unlit shader graph or a blank shader graph. We can rename this to terrain scanner, Unlit, and on the graph inspector, the target is universal, and the material is unlit, which means it isn't affected by the lights of the scene, as opposed to lit. The surface type is transparent, and that's pretty much it for now. Let's turn on Allow Material Override so we can control these options directly in the inspector, instead of opening shader graph every time. So, I'm going to use a part of the shader I've shown here. And if you want to learn more about this shader, make sure to watch this video. There is an in-depth explanation where I show you guys how this works and why it works. Plus it can be used on barriers, on shields, on spheres, a lot of things. Today we are going to use it for a terrain scanner. Just make sure that you go to project settings and in graphics, you find your scriptable render pipeline. Once you found it, make sure depth texture and opaque texture are turned on for this to work out. Because now in our shader we are going to use a node called the scene death, which we can switch to I. This is going to give us a grayscale value of our scene. For what is further away will be black and what is closer will be brighter. And from this we can subtract the screen position in raw mode. We can split and use only the alpha. We could connect directly to the subtract, but if to this we also subtract a value, we can control the thickness. Let's actually first create a color for the intersection color and then a float for the intersection depth with a default value of 0.5 and 
for the color mode HDR and let's select a white color with alpha at 100. So the intersection depth, if you go watch that video and study more about how this intersection shader work, you will notice that we need to invert these values. Basically, whatever zeros and ones that come in, they need to be the opposites. Zeros will be ones and ones will be zeros. And we can subtract this right here and then connect this to the subtract of the scene, death. If you connect this to the base color and say the alpha clip threshold is zero and then save these assets, we can now create a material from this shader. Call this one blue at the end and drag it to our particle system down here. And yeah, it gets super bright, it gets crazy. What I want to show you is that we can actually turn off cast shadows on the material we just created. And if we start increasing the intersection depth, as you can see, it is working, but it's the opposite. What is black should be white and what is white should be transparent. So back to our shader, we can invert this with a one minus node. And then we need to clamp this with a smooth step. We could literally use a clamp node as well. It would be the same outcome. And if we save this, here we go. What was white now is black. And whenever the sphere touches something, it will be white or a blue color. If we select one, it won't work, as you can see. Neither the transparency, because we don't want these black values here. So a noise shader, we can actually multiply this now with intersection color. Connect to the base color. And for the transparency, we can split this last node and use only the alpha channel. And if we save it, here we go. Looking nice, we have an intersection shader. We can increase the intensity of the color. And as you probably have noticed by now, we only see the front face of this sphere. In our material, there is a specific value here, the render face, which is set to front. We can set it to both, and now we will see the outside and the inside faces of this sphere, which is ideal for this effect that we are creating. And if we press play now, as you can see, this grows. And every time it touches the scene, it will create an intersection effect and it looks like a terrain scanner. And in reality, it is a terrain scanner because with this sphere, you can detect objects as well with collision. So it is a very simple method to create a terrain scanner, an effective terrain scanner. But we want this to fade out towards the end. And if we turn on color of a lifetime and say that the last key up here on the alpha is zero, it should, towards the end of the lifetime of this sphere, fade out. But it isn't, because in our shader, we haven't allowed the particle system to communicate with the material. To do so, we can use a vertex color node, which will give us access to the color of each vertex. If we multiply these, just like that, and then replace these connections, and then save it, if we test again our terrain scanner, here we go, it fades throughout the end. Very nice. So the terrain scanner effect is pretty much done. Let's see how we can use it in a game. A very simple example. First, let's apply the changes to the prefab. I'm going to disable the prefab and on my main camera, as you can see, I have this simple camera controller which allows me to fly around. And then I have the terrain scanner, which is extremely simple. Basically, you have a public game object for terrain scanner prefab. And then we have two options to control the duration and the size of the terrain scanner. As soon as I press spacebar, I will call spawn terrain scanner function, where we will instantiate at the camera position the terrain scanner prefab. We will access the particle system that is on the first child of this object. This could be done in a number of ways. And if it is indeed a particle system, we will access its main module and change the start lifetime to be equal to duration and the start size to be equal to size. And then we will destroy this after the duration we set up there plus one second. If we save this and let the script compile, we can then say the duration is 3, for example, and the size 300. I found this to be good values and then assign the prefab we just created. And once we press play, if I use the spacebar, as you can see, I'm indeed spawning a terrain scanner effect, which now you know how it works. And it's awesome. You can do so many things with this. 
The cool thing with this script is that you can change in real time the start lifetime and the start size. As you can see, it's now 3 and 3 hundredths. If I say it's 2 and a half seconds and the size is 250, it will change its motion and its duration. It looks a little bit different. You can play with these values. Another thing that will change the motion is if we enter on the prefab of the terrain scanner, the size of our lifetime, this curve right here, has an enormous influence on the aspect. If I change it to this, now it will look slower in the beginning and faster in the end. But I prefer how it was, so faster in the beginning and slower towards the end. It's up to you, actually. But in essence, this is it. This is how you create a terrain scanner. It's basically with a sphere that has an intersection shader. Plus, it isn't super heavy on performance. It's actually not bad. And it isn't that hard to implement. If you eventually get access to this project by becoming my patron and by supporting me, you will notice how I made this and you can have a better look on how it's done. So I hope you have enjoyed this video, I hope this is a good basis for you to create a terrain scanner effect. I certainly enjoy discovering this technique and it is all possible thanks to my patrons. So to them I want to say thank you by supporting me last month. And as usual a quick shout out to the top tier patrons which are Alex Peak, Alexander Brazy, Alvman, Ape on Fire, Aurora A, Aviato Bali, Bachkar, Bonehead, Cat Loaf, Cyber Cradle, Daniel Schmidt, Deep Anchor, Yaku, Diana Simonian, Diego Marx, Duitran, Effect Yellow, El Sharif, Easy, Fang Striker, Frosty Forty, George Mickleborough, Giulio Benvenuti, Grub Lab, Guilherme Trindade, Jason Marrero, Jeff Rowe, José Salazar, Casey Miller, Lee Ann Holt, Zatuli, Lucas Rocha, Matt Mahon, Mehmet Chakush, Mike Bell, Minazuk, Nikolai Yalna. Oitsk, Fanyurak Rapol, Phoenix, Pradip Sen, Radioactive Bullfrog, Randomizer Ross, Revenant Games, Ranks, R. Lee, Shikakaka, Travis McCallum, Very Suta, Riches Love, Whiplash, Will Hughes, Will Pudd, Dong Mao Dong, Chen Pyongling, and Aman. So, thank you all very much for watching this. I hope you have enjoyed, and I hope to see you on the next video. Thanks. Bye.